Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Cast. I'm your host, Seishu, and today I'm speaking with a writer who happens to, uh, to, happens to know a great deal about photography, and I figured I should just invite him in to talk. His name is C.J. Chilvers, and he's based out of Chicago. You may have read his blog post at A Lesser Photographer, which is one of my favorite blogs to read. Honestly, this is a blog that I wish... Uh, could be turned into a book. And guess what? It is going to be turned into a book of sorts, uh, thanks to Craft and Vision in a couple of a couple of months. Uh, I wanted to invite CJ to come in and talk a little bit about his background and his passion for photography and photographers, because I think his advice is so sound that I recommend really jumping off of my blog to go and check out his blog. So CJ, thanks for thanks for joining us. Oh, that's the best intro ever. Well, th thanks for the kind words. <laughs> Absolutely, man. You know, the, the honest truth is, you know, uh, for a few months or I don't know how long you were you you sort of gone for, I missed your posts. I mean, I used to get them all the time in my inbox. I was like, where is this guy? You know, uh, and I'm glad you're back. I'm so glad you're back. Uh, let's let's begin, as I do with all my guests, to, to sort of get to know you a little bit better. Uh, you, you've described yourself as a writer. Right. I'm wow. a professional writer. That's that's how I make my living. But I've been a photographer for 30 years or so. And it's just because of how many things I've failed at, at photography <laughs> that I think I can write this blog and this book. Well, I'm a, I'm a professional writer, but I tried being a professional photographer a long time ago. And even then, I couldn't make money at it. And uh you know, at least I couldn't make money doing what I wanted to do. And uh, this is in the days of film. So it kind of it gave me a bias towards uh, being an amateur and doing what I want to do. <laughs> sure. You know? what, what, is, what is a lesser photographer? How did you come up with the, the, with the name for the blog? Well, my friend, uh, my best friend Tom, he is, uh, he's just as devoted as I am, but he's the opposite end of the equipment spectrum. He will buy every you know brand new thing that he can afford, every the biggest lens, you know the the most impressive stuff. And uh, I always, whenever I went out with him on like nature walks to to do photography, I would uh, always feel like the lesser photographer. And, oh, I see. Okay. Right, and it's it's also the way other photographers tend to look at me. You know, when I take out uh, my iPhone to shoot something instead of you know the, the uh, you know a white Canon lens. <laughs> Yeah, indeed, indeed. So, give me an idea as to how you got your start in actually even approaching. Like, what what motivated you to even uh, to write for photographers? Are you writing for photographers first of all? I I write for people who generally don't like to read. So I <laughs> I started by uh, uh, writing books about music, and it's still the 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 book that sells the most right now is uh, the Van Halen Encyclopedia, which I wrote back in 1999. Uh, so I it's horribly, wow. <laughs> it's horribly out of date, but uh, that's that's still the one that sells the best. And uh, so then I moved on to other things I care about. You know, it's it, when I'm writing a book or writing a blog. Again, I'm not doing it professionally, so I just write what I want to write. And you know, photography was the next thing down the line that I really love. So, you know, besides music, so in, why not? In, 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 <laughs> Is your background uh, as a writer, did you come from, uh, did you go to journalism school or was it just uh, something that you just kicked off right out of college? When, 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 did, when did the spark really take off? Uh, when I was 12 years old, I had a, uh, wow. a, col a local columnist come and uh, do an assignment at our school and I turned in the assignment and she said, okay, you really have to pursue this. So ever since then, I've been on the you know the school paper or you know whatever. But I didn't think that journalism school really holds anything anymore for people. It's just it's kind of like photography, where you can get a degree in photography, but it's better to specialize in something else and bring photography with you. Sure. You know, and that's and that's kind of what I did. I I uh, got a degree in biology, but I brought the writing with me. And now I'm, you know, a professional technical writer, which is, you know, boring, but it it definitely it puts food on the table and, sure. you know, allows me to, to uh, do the hobbies like this. Excellent, absolutely. So you 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 write technical manuals and things like that, or is yeah. that right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. And yeah. that and that's your sort of your day job as such. And 
uh, on your free time, you pursue a lesser photographer. Right. And whatever else. I have another wow. site. I have another site called the, this life of leisure that kind of, uh, pokes and prods me to remind myself that, uh, you know, I, I live a kind of rarefied life in a very technically forward country and I need to take more advantage of it to be leisurely and less, <laughs> and less, uh, you know, at the computer all day long. I love it. I love it. I'm going to have to definitely uh, link to that as well. Like I haven't had a chance to look at that site. Um, yeah, that's that's relaunching too. That's uh, it's been uh, I've been away from that for a while too. Okay, well, uh, and you before we started recording, you 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 said something to the fact that uh, you've given a speech at some point, uh, some point, and that has that regenerated your interest in uh, writing again for a lesser photographer and the other side. What was that speech all about? When was that speech? Uh, given? It was last year. It was at Ignite Minnesota. Mm-hmm which now I'm finding out I, I probably wasn't qualified for because I'm from Chicago. I think you're supposed to be from Minnesota. but uh, <laughs> It's all connected. But, right, but, but uh, I guess <laughs> the, the topic of the speech, you know, it, I guess intrigued them enough where they let me talk. And uh, I got up there in front of like 900 people, I think wow. it was, and, nice. uh, and just laid out this crazy, my crazy theory of photography. And... Uh, when I got back to my seat, I had professional photographers come up to me and say, yeah, that's, that's pretty much dead on what photography is about. And when I got home, I got nothing but email and Twitter posts and everything saying how wrong I was from mostly amateurs. You know, <laughs> It was my fellow amateurs that, that really attacked it, and all the professionals were right along with it. I, Interesting. I, it was weird, but it opened up a debate where I said, okay, I got to get back on the site and start addressing this stuff. Can you give us a synopsis of your speech? Because I know it was a probably, uh, was it an eight or six minute speech? Uh, uh, the, yeah, five minutes. Five minutes. It's, it's time varies pr- precisely. You yes, have yes. 20 slides and you have to get out of there right. at the end of the 20. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Okay. What, what, what was the, can you give us an idea as sure. to what the speech was about? It's, it, it was about how to make perfect photos every time. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> and, and basically, the, the theory was you're already making perfect photos. You're just being told that you're not because that's what makes money for photographers. And, uh, you know, it's a, the first biggest secret is that you're making perfect photos. The second biggest secret is that uh, the only way to, to make a lot of money in photography is to teach photography. And so you have to be told over and over that you need just a you know, slightly better lens, you know, not enough that you won't have to come back next year and buy another. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's these, these ways that we nickel and dime readers, and, you know, uh, and I, I don't know, I don't know if you do that or not. I, I don't know at all. I, it's not really criticism about that so much as that uh, being an amateur and taking snapshots is actually, I think the purest form of photography and, it's you know I was criticized. I always criticize gear, and that doesn't even raise an eyebrow anymore. But in this talk, I was criticizing technique, and I basically said technique really doesn't matter, and that's and that's what got the <laughs> the debate going because uh, if you look back through all the the rules of photography, especially the ones you know in textbooks, uh, and the ones I took in photo classes, they they all go back to what clients wanted at some point. You know, even the rules of composition originated with painting and what right. the, the clients of painters wanted. So, you know, to me, you can't really get a better photo and a better story than just a snapshot of family or friends. Or, you know, that's because it means the most to you. And in, in that speech, I put behind me uh, the top 10 or so uh, most important photographs of all time that were in the public domain that I was allowed to show, sure. and uh, not you know not a one of them followed the the proper technique composition. They were all blurry. Mm-hmm. They were done using cheap cameras. You know, uh, usually wartime photos or things like that, and they were all grainy and distorted. So it just I was saying technique is is not. It's not the end all, and you, you know it's okay if you're just taking snapshots because that's the best kind of photography. Yeah, if there's a certain sense of freedom when you are simply in the moment making images, right? Uh, right? Versus versus being so stressed out about like what will the end goal be, and you know, 
I think most most of us uh, professionals or otherwise are always thinking of like, oh my God, how is this going to look? How is how is this going to be perceived by other people before they even enjoy the process of making that image? Uh, I think and that's, that's because I, I think a lot of the uh, advice that we're given right. is from professional photographers from a professional standpoint. You know, it, if you look at all the the top blogs and the top uh, you know podcasts, they're all done by uh, photographers who are professionals at the top of their game, and uh, they have an entirely different outlook on what a photograph should be than their listeners. You know, because they really are a very small percentage. Indeed, indeed. What do you make of uh, obviously the advent of things like Instagram and Facebook? Uh, I, do you feel uh, those are the 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 places where people really should go to learn photography? I think uh, they're great for the democratization of photography. That's the you know the key phrase that everybody has to put out there. But uh, you know for, they're not for me because I think uh, that we've yet to improve on the blog as the best place for photography because on the blog you own everything, you own the experience, you own the story. You can tell as much about it or as little about it as you want. Uh, you, you know all, all these places trying to capture your stories for themselves, uh, I, I, I just, they give, me, uh, they give me the creeps a little bit, especially when we learn things, you know, like, like lately uh, what Flickr is doing and uh, places that we used to trust. Right. Uh, when times get hard, they will resort to anything to, you know, <laughs> to make their VCs and uh, their board members happy. Sure. So your advice would be to essentially own your domain own your own real estate uh, on the internet and essentially publish only, right. only on your domain. Is that right? If you, well, if if you're if you're publishing for other people, yeah. I think that's the best way to do it. If you're publishing for yourself, I still think books are the best way to do it because we wow. really, you know, I, you know, it, it's so simple to make it, and it's it's so cheap right now. Sure. Uh, with all the ways that these databases can mess up your photography. It's nice to have a, a solid paper copy that will last longer than you'll last. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if, you, if you get, you know, hit by a car tomorrow uh, and, and you're gone, you know, somebody might not be able to get to all your photos. But if you kept some books around, sure. they'll, always, they'll, they'll be there for as long as anybody will care. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the forthcoming book. Uh, through craft and vision, are you allowed to talk about that at all? Uh, they haven't told me that I can't. So, <laughs> okay. Okay. you know, uh, they're doing such a great job, though. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't want to let too many cats out of the bag, but this is this is a completely unique thing they're doing. They've never done uh, a process like a book like this. It's a, uh, it's it's gone. They got a hand illustrator to uh, take passages from the book and just like really do great artwork around the, uh, the, around the words. Because originally, uh, you know, uh, David told me, he said, uh, you know, photographs really sell books. And, and I know that you don't like including your own photographs in here. And, and well, I don't why is that? Why is that? Because I would rather people think about their own photographs than mine. Uh, hmm. It's, you know, I, I know that some of the stuff out there I have is good and some is bad, and I don't want someone rejecting an idea because one of my uh, less than great photographs is sitting next to it. That's another reason. But I really want people to think about their own, and uh, and and plus, I really buy into my own philosophy that uh, you know, that the casual pictures, the snapshots, are really what I want to be doing now with my time, especially because I have a two-year-old. Mm -hmm. And so when, when David said, you know, submit uh, a couple of dozen and, and we'll see where they fit in the book, and I did. And uh, then that's when he got back to me and he said, you know, you're right. He goes, These are not in instructional. Uh, this book really is about other people's photographs. We're not going to do photographs in this book. So, you know, that, that, was, that was a big deal from Craft, Craft and Vision to sure. say we're not doing photographs. Yeah. We're, we're going to hire an illustrator and we're going to do this by hand. And, uh, wow, that's and excellent. Yeah, and she did a great job, and it, it it'll be out I think in five weeks now. Okay, excellent. So uh, January fourteenth is a tentative date. Okay, wonderful. Uh, what are your plans for a lesser photographer now that you're back? <laughs> I'm first of all I'm repopulating all the old posts uh, that make sense. 
there's some of them that were very timely. And uh, I think that teaches me a lot that I maybe shouldn't be posting about news and timely events because uh, they just don't matter so much, you know? <laughs> and, and so I'm, I'm going back through my old archives and uh, I'm seeing what, what makes sense and what doesn't to bring back. And, you know, there was about 500 posts. So wow. I, think, I think maybe 300 or so will come back. Okay. And, and I've been doing that for a couple weeks now. So it'll be up there by the time the book's out. Excellent. And the book, what is it really going to be about? Can you reveal that? Yeah, this, uh, oh, it took me months to uh, get this right. But I, I, I've, well, at first I figured I was putting an, an end to a lesser photographer, the, the blog at the time. Okay. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be great if I just took all the posts, all 500 posts, and just edited them down into one book? And, and so nobody would have to go back to the blog and nobody, you know, if they wanted to know what was there, it would be in a book. Okay, well, that's how it started out. But once, <laughs> but uh, I just kept at it for months and months until I, I whittled it down to maybe 45 small chapters of uh, like half a page to two pages each. And uh, just as clear and as simple as I could be. And uh, that takes a long time. I mean, I could have just, you know, slapped it together, put all the posts in a book and been, been done with it. But, right. you know, I really took a lot of time so that I would want to read it. too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Who are you trying to? OK, let me ask you this. Is the book going to be instructive or is it going to be inspirational? I know there's a difference. Uh, and what do you what is your mission with the book? Uh I don't know if they're, I mean, it's, it's, it's what the title is. It's a lesser photographer. They, they tried to come up with a different title for it. Uh, but it's all about, you know, that, that different approach to photography that, uh, to be more personal, more storytelling, more, uh, you know, tell important things that are important to you. And, uh, that's really what it's all about. It's just kind of 45 different ways of looking at it. You know, there's, there's uh, like very deep dives on debates that every blog has about photography, uh, whether you know photography is uh, truth or whether it's honesty, or uh, you know where's the line in that. There's there's a deep dive on that. <laughs> you know there's there's a deep dive on on a lot of. I mean a lot of it was in uh, you know maybe twelve of the chapters would come from uh, the original manifesto that started the site. Uh, but I re-edited those too because you know sometimes after a while I disagree with myself. <laughs> you, you are allowed to change your own mind, of course. Yes, right? yes. <laughs> uh, what? I, okay, let me rephrase my my question and follow it up with this: How are you expecting people to use the book? Uh, you, you could probably read it in about uh, a couple hours. I think that's what David did. <laughs> Okay. And uh, it's it's I guess it's kind of inspirational, but it, it if you really uh, think about it, it could change the way you make photographs entirely. So yeah, it's definitely a high level look at photography because I really think the low levels don't make a lot of sense for most people. You know. What do you mean by low level? Give me an example. Low that- level like techniques. Oh, okay. Uh, like you know, how, uh, how to books. Right, right. Because that's what, you know, I, I wanted to do something like that a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. And I checked out every book from the library I could. And I read through them, and they all sounded the same. And I disagreed with everything that was written in them. <laughs> you know, this is, this is so important that you get this technique right. And then I would ask myself, well, why? Why, why is, you know, that doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know, it's, it's not important to me. <laughs> You know, once you once you get that that higher level overlook of photography, all of a sudden, ninety nine percent of what's out there in books just doesn't matter. You know, uh, from what I'm hearing you say, I feel like you're saying make photography more personable or personal, right? Right. I boiled it down to uh, in in the talk. I boiled it down to three rules that fit into one sentence. It was a uh, tell a Tell a story of a compelling subject to you. So tell, it's like a Maslow's hierarchy of photographic needs. So first, every photo has to tell a story. Sure. If you tell a story of a compelling subject, 
then that's what makes uh, the historically important photographs that we think about and and the ones that get published in National Geographic, maybe. But if uh, at a higher level than that is a subject that's compelling to you. And uh, and that's really the only rule of photography you need, you know, unless you're a professional. I love unless, it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you really have to make that divide because I think it's important. There's a lot of these techniques really do matter, but only if this is your profession. Indeed, indeed. Wow, uh, I can't wait for this book. I really, uh, I, I, I mean, Me too. seriously, I know, right? I, you can't give a, you can't wait for it to, to give give birth to it. I know it's a, it's a beautiful <laughs> feeling. I, I, I want to make sure that everyone gets a, a copy of this book. I know if everyone reads your blog, I'm sure they'll want a copy of the book because I think it it resonates. I mean, it resonates to a point where it reminds. I think it reminded me of. How how I felt when I first started making images. Cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think it, it, because I think we sort of uh, all arrive at photography with this excitement uh, and then we sort of quickly depart into this mold of making money with it. And then what happens is, uh, you know, we are, of course, beholden to how the client wants the images to look and and then it takes us away from how we really were excited about it in the first place right 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 so i think and, I and think, in worst case scenario you start to hate it exactly exactly and then you, you and that's what causes burnout right yeah yeah so uh this is like the antidote to burnout in a way right, right? so <laughs> i hope so yeah. I, I, and i'm sure it will be thank you so much cj i appreciate the time oh, thanks and, for having me absolutely and i look forward to uh of course, posting this on my site and connecting my viewers to your blog and your book. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. Take care. Okay, bye.